Greetings in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Pastor Bobby Paul. I'd like to welcome you today to the internet broadcast of Albany Family Worship Center. Albany Family Worship Center is located at 3024 Kensington Court in Albany, Georgia. Our service times are Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. for midweek Bible study and Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. for morning worship. I hope this message encourages you today and draws you ever closer to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Have a blessed day and always remember this, Jesus loves you. Everybody got a Bible this morning? Hold them up and let me see them. Get them up high. Somebody shout amen. amen. Let's go to the book of John, chapter number 16. John, chapter number 16. I want you to find verse number 12. John 16, verse number 12. Title of this morning's message is Not Now. Not Now. You know, we, we're all the time asking God, 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 what you're doing in my life? What, what, are you, what, what are you doing, Lord? Where are you, where are you taking me, God? And sometimes God doesn't answer. He gives us the gives, he gives response of, of not right now. You, you just keep on doing what you're doing, and I'll, I'll show you later of what I got in store for you. Amen. And, and Jesus, just before his ascension uh, back into heaven, uh, basically said the same thing to his disciples. He said, uh, I got a lot of stuff I want to tell you, but I, I can't tell it to you now. You know, sometimes we're just not able uh, to receive what God is doing. But I do, I do tell you this this morning, God does have a plan and a purpose for your life. It may seem like he doesn't. It may seem like he's abandoned you. It may seem like uh, he's took his hands off you, but he's made you a promise. He said, I'll never leave you. Uh, no forsaking. I'll always be there with you, and I got a plan and a purpose for your life. So if everybody's in John chapter number 16, say amen. amen. If you would, let's stand out of reverence for the reading of the Word of God. You know, and I've, I've read some, uh, some, some uh, uh, surveys uh, where, where they say, well, you know, you don't need to ask people to stand when you read the Word. Uh, they don't. They don't really want to do that. They don't want to be. They don't want. They don't want to stand up. They just want to sit there and have you read the word to them. Let me tell you something. That is an act of reverence. We talked about that this morning in my office about being respectful. When we stand, uh, when God's word is is read, that's that's being that's showing respect for God. That's showing respect for His word. Amen. So if everybody's in John 16, say amen. amen. I'm going to read verse 12 and verse number 13. Uh, I have yet many things to say unto you. This is Jesus talking to his disciples now. I have yet many things to say unto ye, uh, to you, but ye cannot bear them now. How bit? When he, somebody say he. he. The spirit of truth, that's the Holy Ghost, is come. He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So saith the word of God. Father, bless the reading of your word today. Father, you just leave me in powerful word to impact our lives, to change us, to mold us, and make us uh, into the men, the women, the boys and girls that you uh, wish us to be today, Father. Holy Spirit, I ask right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, that you would move in this place that you would touch our hearts and our minds. You would give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive what you have in store for us today. Draw us ever closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Strengthen us through this word this morning. Uh, give us the, the steadfast resolution uh, to be the faithful witnesses that you want us to be to everyone we meet. And Father, as I stand before you right now, God, I just ask you, Lord, to be most merciful and gracious to me, to forgive me. Uh, where I failed you, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me, Father, that I may stand before you right now to receive your mercy and grace. Lord God, uh, through the power of your Holy Ghost, let your words be my words. Let your thoughts be my thoughts. Let your love be in my heart, Jesus, that it flows out and touches everyone under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name I say and pray. I love you, Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. You may be seated and give God a hand clap. Oh, praise. Amen. How many 
of you know that Jesus will not give you more than you can handle at any one time? Uh, he will not pour out on you something uh, that you can't use, something that you can do nothing with. And uh, he's telling his disciples here, he's prepared, preparing to, 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 to go to the cross, as he's preparing to be laid in the tomb, as he's preparing to rise on the third day, uh, to walk this earth for 40 days, to sit back in heaven. He said, I've got a lot of things I want to tell you. There's a lot of things I want to share with you, but I can't do it right now. I can't give it to you right now because you cannot bear them right now. You cannot do anything with them. You're not ready to hear what I got to say. See, see, the Lord Jesus Christ does, somebody say does, does. have a plan and a purpose for your life. Amen? Uh, he has not called you out to watch you walk along dragging your heels with your head hanging down. He's called you out to walk victorious through your faith in Him. Amen. He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, He says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. He's got a plan and a purpose with him, uh, for us in His life. He doesn't always reveal it to us right away. He might give us the vision, but He doesn't give us the whole vision because he, knew, he knows that we'll run out there and try to do it our way and not His way. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we just got to back up and wait on the Lord. Am I talking to somebody in here today? I don't know about y'all, but I'm a get or did person. When, when the Lord lays something on my heart, when God shows me something, I'm ready to get it did right then. I don't want to wait. I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to drag my feet. I'm ready to run. I'm ready to charge the gates of hell with a bucket of ice water. Amen? Because that's what my God wants me to do. But sometimes God wants you to back up and just wait on Him. See, God's got to get you in the position where you're ready to handle the things He's got to say to you. Am I talking to somebody here this morning? Say amen. amen. Am I the only one who likes to get the car ahead of the horse sometimes? Come on now. But sometimes we just got it. God's got a plan and a purpose. And, and, and you know what? And, and the reason He doesn't lay it all out for us is simple. Number one, you might not be spiritually mature enough yet. You, you may not can handle what He's going to show you. He, you may not be able to handle uh, what He's about to tell you. You still got a little growing to do. How many of you know you don't tell a three-year-old everything about life? Hello? You don't tell a three-year-old everything about life. You don't tell a 16-year-old everything that a grown folk knows. Amen? Sometimes they just got to slow down. There's too many people, there's too many people wanting to rush to maturity and not grow as they should. There is a, there is a, there is a walk we got to take. Amen? Some people get in too big a hurry. I'll never forget my oldest kids. They were that way coming up. They wanted to be grown at 13 years old. Amen? And I told them, I said, you ain't grown yet. You still got a lot of growing to do. I just noticed Lacey looking over at AJ and giving him the elbow just then. Amen? Because it's true, these teenagers... These teenage, these 12 and 13 year old want you to let them live their life till they're 18, 19, or 20. That can't be so, amen? They're not ready for that life yet. And there is a lot of times we as Christians, we as children of God, we're not where we need to be that God can reveal everything He needs to reveal to us because we're not spiritually mature enough yet. And if God wants to go to pour that stuff out on us, it tears all to pieces, amen? Paul put it this way uh, to the church at Corinth, at, at Corinth. He said to the Corinthians, I have fed you with me with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye are not able to bear. How many of you know if you try to give a, a, a baby a steak, it'll choke him to death? Amen. He ain't got no teeth. You can't chew that stuff up. Amen. You got to, you got to feed a baby milk. You got to feed a baby. Formula, and there's still a lot of folks in the church today that's on formula. Amen. They ain't they ain't mature enough yet to handle a full spiritual meal. Am I making sense to somebody? Say amen. amen. 
Paul said, because you're not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. There's still a little bit of carnality in some of us. Amen? And, uh, and God's got to get that out of us. There's still a little bit of the natural man we're trying to hold on to. And God's wanting to cast that out of it with the garbage. Amen? He's wanting to bring us to full spiritual maturity so He can reveal to us the plan and purpose for our life. And it, but Paul says, For ye are yet carnal, for where there is among you envy and strife and division. Oh, we see that in the church today. Hello. We see division all over the church. You know, God wants us to be united. God wants us to come together with one mind and one goal to honor and glorify our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It ain't about us. It's not about what we want. It's not about, it's not about what somebody else is doing. It's about what God's trying to do in our life. Amen. It's about this word right here. It's about walking, it's about walking yielded to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Quit being carnal. Uh, you, you're not spiritually mature enough to handle everything God's trying to give you, everything God wants to show you. The second reason is it might cause you uh, to be tempted or tried beyond what you're able to bear. How many of you know God's not going to lay more on you than you stand? Hello? Come on, somebody talk to the preacher. The message goes faster when you say amen. amen. God's not going to lay more on you than you're able to bear. Amen. God's not going to let you walk into a temptation that's going to draw you away from Him that He's not going to give you a means of escape. It says in, it says in a, 2 Peter 2.2 2, And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. The things you're facing are not unusual. Amen, I owe me. Amen. The things you're facing are not unusual. There's other people going through the same stuff you're going through. Amen. It's common. You're not facing some, something that's on you. you come, we say all the time, well, why is God doing this to me? Well, God must think I can handle a lot of He's letting all this come against me. No, you're not facing nothing that's not common to your brothers and sisters in Christ, amen? amen. You're facing just natural, everyday struggle and trial. Can somebody hear what I'm saying today? Amen. There has no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. How many of you know we serve a faithful God? Amen. He's always looking out for our best. Amen? Amen? Everything, every good gift, every precious gift comes down from the Father of life. Uh, that, that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. Amen? Amen. you got to let go and let God. Does somebody hear what I'm saying today? God's not going to lay more on you than, than you are able because God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. He ain't called you out to watch you fail. He ain't going to let things come against you that's going to draw you away from Him. As you grow in maturity... As you grow in grace, God will give it to you little by little so you don't choke to death. And somebody hearing what I'm saying today. Our relationship and service to Jesus is a wall of faith. We, we, we walk around this campus, John and I, we walk around this campus every day. If it's raining, we usually come in here and we walk around the inside of the building. And we try to walk every, well at least I do, I try to walk every day. I'm trying to get more weight off of it, plus it's good for my heart, amen. But how, how many of you know when you begin to walk this mile that's around this campus out here, uh, it, you start off with a single step. And then you walk that mile one step at a time. You don't take one giant leap and cut it. You got to walk it out. Hello? You got to walk it out. And there's a lot of times in our life when it comes to walking by faith, we got to walk it out. Amen? There's too many of us want to take one step and be where we need to be. 
I think we're lazy spiritually. And we don't want to have to go through the ups and downs. Amen? We think God ought to just give it to us without us having to walk it out. Well, guess what? If you was to do that, you'd never learn nothing. Amen? You still, if God was to just pour it out on you, still be spiritually ignorant. You wouldn't learn anything. So you have to walk it out. It is a faith walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke 9, 23, said, Jesus said these words, If any man will come after me. Do you want to follow Jesus? Amen. Do you want to plead the Lord Jesus Christ by faith today? Do you want to be, do you want to, do you want to be all you can be as a blood-bought, born-again child of God? Well, listen to this. If any man will come after me, let him deny. We don't like that word. I'm going to say it again. We don't like that word deny. Amen? We don't want to deny ourselves. We want what we want when we want. Amen? Amen. We want, and we want it right now. I don't want to wait. I want it now. Well, sometimes you got to wait. You ever seen, you ever seen a two-year-old in the toy store and they want a toy and you tell them to wait? or that they'll get it for the birthday, and they fall out on the floor, and they go to kicking and screaming and shaking their head and just, and just making a nuisance out of themselves. You know, that's the, way, that's the way we treat God sometimes. Hello? Because we don't want to wait. We don't want to have to walk it out. We're too lazy to get up and exercise our spiritual... Ooh, boy, I'm getting some hard looks this morning. Hey, thank God. We don't want to get up. We don't want to exercise our spiritual muscles. We don't want to exercise our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know something? The more you exercise your faith, the stronger it gets. Amen. 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 The, more, the more you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, when those situations come up, the easier it is to let go and let go. We got to learn to deny ourselves. It's not about what we want. I, I remember I remember my kids coming up, they want to do something, I tell them no, they couldn't do it. They say, Well, Daddy, we want to. I said, I don't care what you want. Because what you want is not what you're gonna get. Amen. See, what they thought they wanted wasn't what they needed. Hello? Am I making sense to you? Say amen. amen. Sometimes what we want is not what we need, and God knows just what we need when we need it. And sometimes we got to wait on Him. we got to be willing to deny ourselves, take up His cross daily. See, this is an everyday thing. It's not a one-time thing. It's an everyday thing. It's a, sometimes it's an every moment thing. Amen? we got to deny ourselves, take up our cross. Listen, and follow Jesus. Are you willing to follow Jesus? Are you willing to get in behind him and take the same step he's taking? Amen. Follow Jesus. When I was in high school, uh, I played. I either, I either on offense when I played football. I either played center or guard. And we had a little old fullback. He was about five foot nothing and soaking wet. He might have weighed a hundred pounds. Amen. And when they would, when he would, when he would run a dive on my side of the line, he would come in behind me and he would reach out and get a hold of my belt buckle, get a hold of the back of my belt, and he'd get just as close to me as he could. And he would wait to see which way I was going to move that linebacker or that, or that defensive guard out of the way. He would follow right in my footstep till I made him a hole and then he would shoot through it and take off. Now, there's been a lot of times where I've messed up and he went to shoot through a hole and he went back three steps quicker than he got where he was at. Amen? But most of the time, that's the way he done it. You know, because he followed right in my footsteps. Am I making sense to you? And that's what Jesus said when he says, follow me. He's telling us to walk in his footsteps that he tells us it's time to go ahead. Amen. To get just as close to him as we can get so that if he stops, we bump into it. Am I making sense to somebody this morning? Say amen. We've got to be willing to follow. 
The problem is some of us are not willing to follow. We want to get out and tread your head. But if we'll follow Jesus, everything works out. We got to walk from faith to faith. We got to walk, we got to walk by faith and not by sight. Romans 1.17 says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. From act of faith to act of faith. From step of faith to step of faith. Because the just shall live by faith. If you believe that, give God a hand clap of praise this morning. We've got to realize that Jesus has got a plan and a purpose. And to accomplish this daily faith walk with Him, you have to be willing, number one, to yield or surrender to the guidance of the Holy Ghost. I want to say that again. You've got to be willing to yield or surrender to the guidance of the Holy Ghost. Spirit or Holy Ghost in your life. So many people don't want to do that. Well, preacher, I don't mind God the Father and I don't mind God the Son, but you know, I don't know what to think about that Holy Ghost. Well, you ain't matter about what you think about Him. It's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. You've got to let Him have control. Amen. Amen. You've got to give Him. Uh, John, Jesus said in John 16, 13, how be it when He... Do you notice the, the masculine pronoun there? He, this is the third person of the print of the Trinity. Not a it, but a he. And when he, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Ghost, the, the Holy Spirit has come, he will guide you. In other words, he'll take control if you'll let him. He'll show you where you need to go. He'll show you what you need to do. He'll tell you what you need to speak. He'll tell you how you need to act. He will guide you into all truth. Galatians 5.16 says this, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In other words, you won't act like a foolish lost man or woman. You've got to walk in the Spirit. You've got to be willing to give Him control. Am I making sense to anybody this morning to say amen? amen. You've got to walk in the Spirit. Romans 6.16 6, says this, Know ye not to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey. Who are you yielding to? Who are you giving control? I sure hope it ain't a, it ain't a teacher or a pastor or somebody else. I hope it's the Holy Spirit this morning. Because when you walk in the Spirit, you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It says, uh, yield yourself servants to obey. His servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Verse 19 says, I speak after the manner of men because the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye, listen, as ye had yielded your members' servants to uncleanliness. Let me tell you something. When you was walking around in the world, you was all in. When you was lost and undone, you was in the world 100%. You know, if people would take, take that attitude and turn it around and put it into their relationship with Jesus, put it into being yielded to the Spirit, things sure would be a lot different. Amen? Hello, boy. Don't nobody want to tell me amen on that this morning, Brother Dennis. Amen. 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 Praise God. But it's true. I've seen some people. <laughs> Woo. I, I, I'm wearing a belt. It's got the Alabama Crimson Tide symbols on it. And it's not because I'm an Alabama fan. It's because somebody gave me the belt. And it holds my pants up, agent. I don't care, I don't care, I don't care who's going. It could be bold go the clown long as he'll lift my pants, amen. amen. I don't care. But I do, I do not like it for one reason. It, it aggravates some Georgia fans. Amen. I love to aggravate Georgia fans. Glory to God. But you know how much, do you know how much people put in 
uh, to their following of a sports team, a following of a football team, a basketball team, or a baseball team. Boy, they just sell themselves out to it. They'll have Georgia, they'll have their, their sports team tags on their car. They'll have posters on the wall. I know one guy that's got a room that's set up for his favorite college football team, amen? <coughs> Every he wears that he wears their memorabilia in on his shirt, on his hat, on his shoes, on his shorts. I mean, he is just he's just an all and all out fan. He's sold out to them, amen. You know, if we was to take that kind that kind of that kind of a resolve and put it into following Jesus, hell, up, there's no telling where the church might go, amen. There's no telling what might happen. You understand what I'm trying to do? You see what I'm trying to say to you this morning? Because that, that person is so yielded to that sports team, they've given themselves over to them completely. We need to yield to the Spirit that way. We need to surrender to the Spirit that way. Let Him take total and complete control of life. Why? Why do you think Paul said, And be not drunk with wine, but be ye filled with the Holy Ghost. There's too many people not being filled with that. This ain't the first time I've preached this. I can tell y'all, y'all, mm, come on now. Be ye filled with the Holy Ghost. Be yielded to the Holy Spirit. Give Him control. Because only by yielding to the Holy Spirit's guidance and leadership will you be able to understand God's plan for your life. Uh, I'm going to read the rest of uh, verse 16, verse 13 of, of John 16, and He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak, and He will show you things to come. See, the Holy Ghost. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost reveals the things of God to us that we may be able to understand and comprehend. A lot of times Jesus withholds information because we're not letting the Holy Ghost have control. Hello? We're not being led and fed by the Holy Spirit. We've got to give Him control because it's the Holy Spirit that reveals the things of God to us. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 10. Uh, 10. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. Why do you think when I pray, I say, Lord, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive? Hello? Holy Spirit, make us receivable today. Mold us, Lord. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and heart to receive. Paul is saying here, he said, he said because, because of our uh, not yielding to the Spirit, spirit, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love Him. But God hath revealed them to us by His Spirit. See, when we yield, the Spirit reveals. Amen. He'll show us what we need to know. He'll tell us what we need to know. He'll take us where we need to be. Am I making sense to somebody this morning? Say amen. amen. You've got to give that Holy Spirit control. Like I said, Paul was adamant that the child of God be filled with the Spirit of God and be not drunk with wine, but which in it, where is access, but be filled with the Spirit. This is why we should never hinder nor quench the Spirit of God because without the Spirit of God, we'll never understand the things of God. It says in Ephesians 4.30, he said, And grieve not, hinder not the Holy Spirit. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5.19, Quench not the Spirit, but in so many churches today, you jump up filled with the Holy Ghost, go shouting amen. People turn around and look at you like, huh, what is your problem? Hello? Any of you have experienced that before? Boy, you feel the Spirit getting all over you. And you want you want to jump. You, 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 get, you start getting that hand up in the air. And Brother Wonderful looks around at you and looks down his nose and says, huh. You need to behave yourself. And right then and right there, we quench the Spirit. 
Right then and right there, we hinder the Spirit of God, what He's trying to show us. Well, if we'd have jumped up and just shouted one time, you don't know who it might have affected besides you. Hello? Well, preacher, I'm just not that. I'm just not vocal. Well, guess what? I'm a shy person too. Don't laugh at me. I'm very shy. Amen? I'm very reserved. It takes a lot. Spirit's really got to move me, amen? To get up and make a fool of myself when I'm singing, praise God. To make me make a fool of myself when I'm praising the Lord, amen? It's got to be of the Spirit and by the Spirit, praise God. But I've learned this, when we'll jump up and just shout one time, when we'll let Him have His will and His way with us, when we quench not the Spirit, when we hinder not His work, things go a lot better, Amen? We've got to learn to stop quenching the Spirit. And guess what? Uh, uh, hindering the Spirit is one of the reasons Jesus said these words. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be, given un shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. The church, the modern day church better be careful. I want that to sink in for a minute. The modern day church had better be careful. Because there's only one unforgivable sin, and that's blasphemy. And that can mean rejection, quenching, or hindering the Holy Ghost work in your life. Come on now, somebody. That's unforgivable. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, we say, well, that's, that's somebody rejecting the Holy Spirit's call to get saved. But it's also rejecting the Holy Spirit's work in your life. Think about that for a minute now. The unforgivable sin is not murder. The unforgivable sin is not adultery. The unforgivable sin is rejecting the Holy Ghost. And what He's trying to do in your life. Uh, verse 32 says, And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, whoo, I've heard a pastor standing up in their pulpit and telling their congregation that the gifts of the Spirit are alive. That the Holy Spirit no longer indwells. The Holy Spirit no longer feels. You know what they just done? They spoke against the Holy Ghost. That's right. I don't know about y'all, but I ain't brave enough, baby. <laughs> if he done it in the day of Jesus, he'll do it today. Amen. I'm going to say that again. If he done it in the day of Jesus, he done it in the day of the disciples, he'll do it again today. Because he says in the book of Malachi, he said, I am the Lord, I change not. And he is God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 We need to be careful. One of the biggest problems we have in the church is we just won't give up and let the Holy Spirit have His will and His way with us. We're trying to do it our way. And when we try to do things our way, Jesus cannot reveal His plan and purpose to us. There's a lot of things probably the Lord wants to show all of us this morning, but you know what? Until we're filled with that Spirit, until we surrendered and yielded to His control, until we're willing to say, Lord, not my way, but Your way, until we're learn, willing to grow in grace, you know what? He says, not now. So I need to ask you this morning, where are you at this morning? Where are you at? Are you willing to yield today? Are you willing to say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done? Are you, willing, are you willing just to let go and let God do what He needs to do in your life? Give the Holy Spirit control. Not worry about, look at, we should never worry about the consequences. That's God's responsibility. Amen. Our responsibility is this. Here I am, Lord. Take control. I had to come early on in my ministry, early on in, in my walk with God, I had to come to that conclu conclusion. I want whatever God has to offer. See, I was raised a certain way that the Holy Spirit no longer fills the Christian's heart and mind. That, he, that the gifts of the Spirit ceased with the very last apostle. 
And I had to come to the conclusion, if he's living down inside of me, he ain't stopped nothing yet. Amen. Amen. He's still alive and well. And I need to give him control. Will you do that this morning? Will you say, Lord, here I am. I surrender all to you. Will you say this morning, Lord, I want to know everything you have in store for me. But Lord, I'm willing to walk it out by faith with you and let you show me along the journey. Will you do that this morning? We're going to take a few minutes. We're going to open up these altars. And whatever you'll need, I'm going to ask you to stand and come this morning. If you want to, if you want to come this morning and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask you to stand and come. If you want to come this morning and say, Lord, here I am. Reveal to me the things I need to know. I'm willing to walk by faith and not by sight. I want you to stand and come. If you're sick and suffering this morning, will you do as the Scripture says and come to the elders of the church and let them anoint you with oil and the prayer of faith will save the sick. All heads are back. All eyes are closed. There's nobody looking around. These altars are open. Will you take a step of faith this morning? Hi, this is Pastor Bobby Paul again. I hope you enjoyed today's message. It has encouraged and drawn you ever closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there may be some of you out there today that's made a decision of faith. That is the decision to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And it's so simple to do today. The Bible teaches us that if we'll just confess with our mouth and believe in our heart the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you can call upon him right now by saying this simple prayer of faith. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me, a sinner. Right now, Lord, I turn from sin and self, and I turn to you, Jesus, and I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, I give you all authority, control, and care of my life. Be my Lord and Savior forevermore. I love you, Jesus. Amen. If you just said that prayer, you just become a blood-bought, born-again child of God. And we would love to hear your decision here at Albany Family Worship Center. And here's how you can contact us. You can write us at Albany Family Worship Center, 3024 Kensington Court, Albany, Georgia, 31721. You can send us an email, and our email address is my afwc at gmail.com that's myafwc at gmail.com or you can call us at 229-434-0342 we're looking forward to hearing from you today and we would love for you to come and visit we'd love to meet you and the family have a blessed day and always remember this jesus loves you